Hey, welcome to Tamayelt. And the topic today is on dreams. Talking about dreams, I had a lot of dreams when I was a little girl. When I was about seven or eight years old, I wanted to be an archaeologist just because I really loved antiques. When I got a little bit older, I fell in love with rock and I wanted to be a geologist. But of course, you know, our dreams will always change as we grow older. And my dream has definitely evolved into many different things. But I think one of the most important things that we want you to take away from this show today is that despite the fact that we're older or how old we are, you know, we still have to have some kind of dream for ourselves. And who better to demonstrate and talk about dreams than our guest today? She is quite young and small, but she has numerous various big dreams. Let's check it out. Welcome to the studio again, and guess what angel I have in the studio with me. She's only seven years old, but she has her own YouTube channel, and she also knows two languages, that is French and English. Say hello to Anne, and Anne, say hello to our audience. Hi. Let's go back to our seating place, and we'll talk a little bit more, okay? Yeah. All right. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Woohoo! How do you feel? Comfortable. Yeah. Comfortable. Yeah. What What do you have here? I see a lot of your stuff. I have some seashells and some starfish and some my two books and a rubik. So, what's your dream? What do you like to do when you grow up? I will. I like to be a swimmer and a book writer. A swimmer and a book writer. Talking about swimming, I think I, I, I know some of the things that you, that you like. I know you like marine animals. That's why you have a lot of shells. And I know you like animals a lot. And I know you know how a frog is born. Can you tell me how a frog is born? So a frog lays many eggs, so the eggs are always laid together. And when the tadpole hatch, they just live in the sea. They don't come. The air, they just live in the sea, and then when they grow a little bit more, they have some two tiny feet. And so I'm a tadpole now. I swim, I'm swimming, just keep swimming. You want to swim with me? Just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. swimming. Okay, I'm a tadpole. What happens next? I swim. And they, they have some legs grow Okay, up. so my legs are starting to sprout. Okay, legs sprouting, and I'm still swimming. What else? And then they had a, t a little tail. Oh, I have a little tail. Where's and your tail, tadpole? Where's your tail? Oh, uh, there's your tail. Okay. And, and when they grow up, they their tail disappears. Tail disappears. No more tail. And they and they turn to a baby frog, and they grow a little bit more. They could turn to a frog. They grow a little bit more. They turn to a frog, as green as the thing that you're sitting on. Yeah. Yeah. So why do you like to be, why do you want to be a swimmer? Because I love marine animals. You love marine animals? I can see that because look what I see here. Look what you brought to the studio with us. A starfish. Yeah. And you can see the mouth here. Oh, here's the mouth. Wow, it's a big mouth. Big. It smells bad. It smells all right. It smells like the sea. You yeah, don't like the smell? Yeah. The and he had sh he don't he don't have eyes. He look he uses his tongue to touching everything. Oh, he uses his tongue. Where's his tongue? Where's his tongue? Is in his mouth. In his I mouth. can't open it. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a he's now a ground starfish. Ground starfish cannot open their mouths for sure. Yeah. I want you to tell me a little bit because I know you want to teach people to speak English, and I want you to share a tip. How can people learn English better? So they can look on YouTube, mm -hmm. and they gotta read English books, and they're learning English with singing some English songs, and I get ready to go to go to Eng English school. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of things to do, huh? To yeah. look at YouTube, to sing English songs, to go to English school, to speak to you on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But okay, Anne, I want to I want to know how did you get so good at English? Because I because I I look at YouTube the English movie mm -hmm. and I read English books and I sing in English songs. Oh, that's that's a great number of things that you are able to do. I love that you're doing so many things. 
Okay, I have to ask you. I know you have a secret, and I know you have a doll that you always keep at home. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. And I even heard from your mother that she said something. You, you cannot pick between the doll or your brother. Yeah. Because you love them both so much. All right, but the thing is your mother brought the doll here. You want, you want me to give it to you? Your mother brought the doll here? Yeah. You want to you wanna take it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do you love this doll so much? Because, because it's special. It's special? Why is it special? The, because it's very, because there's paying very much money and I don't want to lose it. Oh, you don't want to lose it. I've also heard that this doll was with you ever since you were born. When I was 20 months. When you were 20 months. It's so special to you. Here, I'll give it back to you. I do. I gotta put it here. Oh, you put it in a corner. <laughs> I would expect you to hold it dear to your heart, but you just oh, put it in a corner. <laughs> yeah, that's sweet. And uh, I think I would like to invite you to play our game. Okay. Are you ready for it? Yeah. Yes? Okay, before we play the game, I think you're gonna stand up and you're going to do some exercises with me. Okay. All right. Anne, are you ready for our warm-up before the marathon challenge? Yes. All right. We're going to dance and sing to your favorite song. What's your favorite song? Bananas in pajamas. Bananas in pajamas. Good song. All right. So I'm going to go right. You go right with me. We go left, okay? Ready? Get set. Go. Bananas, Bananas in pajamas are coming down, down the stairs. Bananas in, in pajamas. pajamas. Are and chasing, chasing teddy bears. Woohoo! Where's your teddy bear? It's a teddy doll. Teddy doll! All right. All right, Ann, and your banana and pajamas and teddy doll. Let's go and play the game, all right? Okay. We'll be right back. Coming up, our little cutie Ann is about to concur on the IELTS challenge. Let's wait and see next on Tam IELTS. You're back with us on Tama Yelts, and this is the Tama Yelts Marathon Challenge. This is the IELTS Marathon. With the first challenge, you have to look for three items. The passports, the key, the confirmation letter. After that, you have to be ready for a perfect photo shoot. Then perfect fingerprints. Moving on, series of challenges will be ready for you at the monitor. And the last and surely the hardest one, you will have to hide away from the spotlight, collecting six characters, then form the word. The IELTS Marathon is ready right now and of course i'm not alone because i have my little angel here with me come here baby all right you know what you got to do right Anne? yeah and are you ready for the challenge yeah but i gotta warn you okay because this floor is not going to be as clean as it is now it, there's going to be a mess and you got to dig up the mess to find that thing that you need to find okay are you ready or are you afraid i'm ready you are ready i love that spirit Good luck, and I will see you soon. I'll be right there if you need help, all right? Okay. All right, now you should stand over there. Okay, Anne, I need you to do something for me. Close your eyes, and something magical will appear. Anne, Anne, what? you can now open your eyes. Oh, really? Oh, now you gotta find those three items that you need for the IELTS exam. You gotta find the passport, you gotta find the reg registration letter, and you also gotta find keys. You're digging through. You might be getting hotter, and hotter, and hotter. Passport. 
There, you got the keys. Then you got only one more item. Oh. What is that item? You got the envelope and you have the keys. And now you need to find the passport. Look deep within the layers. A Look mouse, deep right? within the layers. Anything that you have not opened at all. Anything you have not opened or looked inside. Make sure to listen to the sound. Listen to the sound. No. You're getting hotter. You're getting hotter. Very, very hot. But maybe you're turning a little bit too far, too far. Ah, and what do you like to wear to school? What do you use to, to contain your books? It's not outside, it's inside of something. Inside of something. I suspect it's inside of something. Oh, that's one thing that it can potentially be in. No. What's another thing? It's impossible. Oh, look closely at the things you've touched in the past few moments. Feel closely of the things you've touched. Is there any clue as to what it is? You found it! Now you have your three items. That's such a good job, thank you. Okay, you're now on to your next challenge, which is the photo shoot and fingerprint challenge. You gotta take a picture, wait 10 seconds, do the perfect pose, and then you'll get your perfect picture. You got 10 seconds, now do the perfect pose. An IELTS pose is a pose that is normal, no covering of the whole face. And you can see the photo. Let's check the photo again. Oh, the photo is too dark, but it's actually good. We have approved your photo. You're on to the next round. That is the fingerprint round. For the IELTS test, you got to take your fingerprints and you got to have all of your 10 fingerprints taken. There you go, you have ink and you have tissue paper. All right, four fingers done. She has six more fingers. Six fingers done. Four fingers, only two left. That is correct, that is correct. Congratulations, then you gotta dry your hands. Oh really? Stick. Dry your hands and make your way to our next section. First challenge, you're going to hear something in your ears and you have to pick a word to basically suit all of this. Ready? All right, let's hear. Well, why don't we start by making a flow chart from the notes our tutor gave us? Yes. Um, so, on one side we could have the paper production cycle here on the left and on the other side the recycling. Good idea. Let's start at the top with the production. The first step in the process is to get the raw materials. Yes, and they tend to come from pine forests. OK. And then the bark... What uh, do you have? Nature. Nature, for what number? One. It's not nature, but it's very close. It's very close. Try again. Try one more time. Is it pine forest? Ding, 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 you are correct. It is pine forest. And you are on to the next challenge. It's the reading challenge. You gotta read this text and answer the question. So read this text for me. Ants are a fun animals. A man at Stanford School says that ants, ants love their family. So ants often live with their family. So among all of these three statements, I will read you the three statements. Which one do you think is correct? Okay, based on what you just read. Number one, people think ants are fun. Number two, ants hate their family. Number three, ants play games all the time. Which one do you think is correct? The first one. The first one, people think ants are fun. You are correct again. Congratulations, we're on to the next challenge. This is the paraphrase challenge. 
I will read you this sentence and you will pick one of the underlined words and find a similar word with a similar meaning to those letters, okay? So I will read, many people have cars. Some people have more cars than all of their friends. They just buy cars for fun. Now, of all people, cars have friends buy and fun. Find a, a synonym for one of those words. People. People is synonymous with? Human. Humans, you are correct again. You're so good. Well, on to the next challenge. The answer sheet challenge. You gotta find one of one of the mistakes in this. Where is the mistake? Okay. U tub. U tub number six. Why is this wrong? Why is this wrong? Because in YouTube they are the E in the left. And we are on to the next section. All right, we're back at Tamayelts, and of course, this is a challenge that's going to be a little bit difficult, but it's not impossible. We have six letters all scattered around the floor, and our guest here has to go around and basically find those letters and put those letters into a word that actually makes sense. And remember, you cannot go into the light, but you can have your hands touch the light. Clear? Yeah. Ready? Get set, go! One letter gone. You got five more letters to go. She picked two T's. What's the next letter? There is an U. There is an E. Two T's, a U, and an E. What can that be? There's now an L. And an R. I think I know what the word is. Do you know what the word is? All right. Anne is now busy scrambling and shuffling the letters together to find the right word. And let's hope that she gets it right this time. Turtle. Turtle. Can you bring the letters to me? All right. You and you have T. You have T. Yeah. We have U. We have R. T U R. That's a tur already. We have another T. That is turt. And we have an L. And we have an E. You are so absolutely correct. It is turtle. You've surpass all of our challenges so well. And the final challenge for our Anne today is actually a pronunciation challenge. And I'm gonna give you a tongue twister. Is that all right with you? Yeah. So Anne should say this tongue twister twice. It is, she sells seashells on the seashore. Okay, how are you gonna say this two times? One, two, three, go. Seashell, seashell on the seashore. Next, next. Seashell, seashell in the seashore. All right, you're so good. High five. You're so good today, An. I heard you have a YouTube channel because you did so well. I'm suggesting that we do something together for your YouTube channel. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. But in order for us to do that, we need a little bit of light. Can we have some light, please? All right. And I have this perfect thing here for us to take a video together. Okay. Why don't you tell something to your audience? Hi, my name's Anna, and I'm in Tamayos. That's perfect. All right, guys, that's it for Anne's YouTube channel. And of course, don't go anywhere because I know the next section you're going to love. It is our weekly Idioms of the Week section. And you're going to listen to some very, very interesting sentences. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Don't count your chicken before the eggs have hatched. This idiom is used to express. Don't make plans for something that might not happen. For example, she wanted to buy a dress in case someone asked her to the dance. But I told her not to count her chickens before they hatched. Next, on Tamayos. Let's listen to the video chosen for voice of this week. And of course, lots of tips provided by our IL expert await us. And how does model Tiung of Lin do the real speaking test of the IL exam? That's next on Tamayas. You can miss it.
Oliver, welcome back to the studio. It's so good to be back again. So good to see you again. <laughs> and of course, you know, last time we, we talked about hobbies. This time we're going to talk about dreams. And previously before you, there was a child, seven, year, seven years old. And she has a lot of dreams and she's doing a lot of things. But uh, this time we're basically going to basically look at a model. And her name is Tiong Ngoc Ling. And, but before we go on to her, tell me a little bit about some of your dreams uh, when you were a little kid. <laughs> I suppose when I was a child, I had very, very vivid dreams. And um, actually, I, I still remember one dream I had when I was just a little kid, uh, where I, I dreamt that there were witches and, uh, and uh, wizards flying in through my bedroom window. Oh, wow. And uh, I used to live next to a, a church, and, and so they... I, I was living near a graveyard, and I, I think, you know, I, I felt like spirits were flying around me. Uh, it was a very <laughs> peculiar dream. So, um, yeah, I still have a, a very, very vivid dreams, and I, I really uh, see a lot of visual things in my dreams. Wow, those are, those are very, a uh, big imagination, big <laughs> imagination that you have. Um, our next guest, though, Tiel Ngoc Ling, she's actually a model, and her dream is to be a professional model, to be very good. She's closer and closer to that dream because she, she's the runner-up in, um, in Vietnam's Next Top Model. And uh, let's take a look at how she, what she does to prepare for that dream. Let's do it. Let's take a look. What's your name, please? My name is Tiong Ling. And may I see your identification, please? Mm -hmm. Here it is. Thank you. Can you tell me about where you live? Mm. I live in Haizun City. Um, my city is not a noisy one, not a busy one. It's very quiet and a suitable, a convenient place for us to take a rest after busy days, busy life in Hanoi. What do you like to do in your free time? In my free time, I like uh, to listening to music, dra. It's um, um American, African American music, and it's um one of the oldest kind of music in the world. Next, I will give you a topic card. You will have to talk about the topic for one to two minutes. You have one minute to think about what you are going to say. You may take some notes if you wish. Do you understand? I understand. Can you start taking notes now? Please? Okay. Start speaking now, please. Okay. Um, well, people nowadays are becoming more and more concerned about their health. As a model, it's very important for me to keep a good body shape and also good health for work. And I love doing workout at home. Each day, I spend two time periods for doing workout. Uh, one in the morning after waking up. And I usually do gentle yoga because it is a series of slow and simple movements which focus on breathing and postures and it's really a good day to start a day. Uh, and the second time would be uh, between 5 and 6 p.m. and it's time for building the muscle. First I start with heat workout for 10 and 20 minutes and then I focus on the a tense workout for butt, for abs, and for legs. Mm. And I love doing workout at home because it, because I have my own pay, own space, and it um, also saves a lot of time and uh, money, but also effective. And some people ask me that uh, why I can uh, uh, do workout at home myself without any trainer. Or, uh, because I subscribe and uh, um, follow the 
January on YouTube and follow their schedule. And that's really good. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Why do some people think that modern lifestyles are not healthy? Mm -hmm. I think modern lifestyle is not healthy because of many reasons. The very first one should be that there is much pollution nowadays. Uh, pollution includes air pollution, water pollution, and noise pollution, and even land pollution. Um, another reason is that um, people have to suffer from poisoned drink and food. Well, it's a um, quite serious problem in Vietnam today because um, they have to uh, confront with uh, many toxic fake products, you know, from fake eggs, fake rice, and poisons, snacks, and chips for children. Um, and what's more, consumers nowadays even have to suffer, uh, even become victims of uh, moral hazards from the constantly sellers because they can do anything at any price for their own profit. And the third reason should be the, in the dependence too much on the technology. Uh, I can say that people nowadays are too lazy and too, uh, too dependent on household appliances, on the transportation, even five 500 meters, they take motorbike instead of walking, that's not good. And the last reason I think that people nowadays suffer from much stress and pressures, which come from mm, the life around them, from work and personal life and the environment. Okay, thank you. That's the end of the test. All right, so uh, now that you've heard Tiong Ngoc Ling speak, what do you think about what she said? Uh, she uses a really good range of vocabulary, uh, despite the fact that she didn't use any idioms. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's okay not to use idioms if we can't think of any. Mm -hmm. um, she uses things, uh, vocabulary like toxic, fake products and conscienceless uh, sellers, which I, I really liked, people without a conscience. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought that was really interesting language. Mm -hmm. And we talked before this, and actually you mentioned something that is quite useful for, for students or for contestants mm -hmm. when they cannot think of something to say. What, what should they do? Yeah, absolutely. It's really important that students or examinees uh, just keep on speaking. So sometimes if you can't think of what to say, it's a really good idea to prepare yourself for this. So I would recommend that students use uh, idiomatic expressions like, oh my god, my mind's gone completely blank. Uh, let me see, let me think about that for a minute. Um, well, I'm not really sure, but I guess if I have to give you an answer, I would say... Da -da -da -da. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's great. And then what happens when they think of the idea? Then immediately start talking and uh, immediately back up your idea, give examples, just keep on speaking somehow. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, Ling, how did you find that performance? Did you enjoy that performance of yours? I. Uh I didn't satisfy with, the, with my performance because I think I was too nervous and that's why uh, it's the fail to meet my uh, expectation. Were there any point in time when you, th when you thought that the examiner gave you a really hard time? Um, I think he always um, make me feel hard to pass the test. How many points did you think you got, girl? Oh, I think uh, this time maybe I only get six because it's not good. Uh, do you think with the content that she gave out, do you think that's a fair score or can she do better? Uh, I think maybe she's scoring herself a little bit lowly, uh, low in, in terms of uh, vocabulary. Um, mm -hmm. She uses a wide range of vocabulary to address the topic, although she could perhaps use some more idiomatic expressions. But um, yeah, I think uh, in terms of her vocabulary, um, she's pretty, pretty strong already. Mm -hmm. So she should be more confident, right? Mm -hmm. Like you said last time, confidence is the key. But Animation I also think that key. for people who, who are getting around five to, to six, they're the sort of people who can develop their skills quite quickly and mm. improve, improve their mark. 
Oh, that's a great thing. That's a great thing that you said that. How can they do that? Is it just by practice? And well, because practice? It, it is practice, but at that stage, they're aware of all the grammar that they need to mm -hmm. use, and then it's just putting it into practice, speaking to people regularly, and just ensuring they use a wide range of uh, vocabulary and grammar. So. Um, I, I think it's really easy for a person at that stage to increase their mark. Guys, you've heard from Oliver again some of the best tips for people taking the IELTS test. And of course, as every week, we have the tips, 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 and tips section. And you're going to find a lot, of, a lot more advice there because don't worry. Never, ever worry if you cannot remember everything because we have everything online for you. So check out our social media sites to find these tips again. But for now, take a look at those tips and see what they are. All right, so the tips were actually on writing. Um, we, we should talk a little bit about you know, writing the introductory paragraph. Mm -hmm. Any tips on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the introduction should be a, a fairly quick thing to write, and it should usually consist of two sentences. Mm -hmm. The first sentence should really uh, set the scene for the whole essay by paraphrasing what the question is. Um, now, some students say, everything is a controversial issue. <laughs> <laughs> X is a controversial issue, and yeah. that's sometimes not true. Mm -hmm. So what I like to encourage my students to do is to say when something became an issue or when people started talking about it, mm -hmm. where and who is affected by it, yes. what the issue is, and why it's an issue. Mm -hmm. So the five Ws. What, where, when, who, and why. Exactly. That, that would be the first sentence which really um, clarifies to the reader what they're going to be reading about. Mm -hmm. In the second sentence, they should have a very clear thesis statement. Mm -hmm. And this is like uh, the topic sentence for your paragraphs. Yeah. In this sentence, you should say what your opinion is going to be, yes. if it's an opinion essay. Or simply for a cause effect solution essay, you should say in this essay some causes such as A and B will be examined along with some solutions such as verbing and verbing. Mm -hmm. How should they end the introductory paragraph? Well, I mean, the, 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 top, uh, the thesis statement, uh, having a very clear thesis statement mm -hmm. which um, tells the examiner exactly what they're going to be saying throughout their essay. Mm -hmm. um, I think some of the weaker essays tend not to have a clear idea in the first paragraph. And it's very important that your essay has a consistent message from beginning to end. All right, definitely. Thank you. Thank you for those tips. And guys, as every week, we scour Facebook pages, we scour the internet to find that one video that we're going to show in the show. And we did so again. And we have this girl called Inli. She's very passionate about her dreams, and she has a lot of dreams. So let's take a look at what her dreams are in the next Voice of the Week section. Hi, my name is Lee. The reason why I'm making this video is to share with you guys about my dream job. Well, actually my used to be dream job. Looking back at time, there were numerous jobs that I considered to be my dream jobs in the future. Singer, dancer, even astronaut. So many jobs that I could not remember right now, but to name one occupation that stick to my mind the longest. I have to say, flight attendant. Well, once I was little, my family was not really well off, so traveling abroad was something out of my reach. But I didn't know that. I would burst into tears every single time my dad said no to my request to go to another country. That's why, just to cheer me up, my mom said I could be an air artist in the future. And I actually believed it. Well, and gradually, it became something that I desired. For a 10 years old girl like me, being a 
Flight attendant means dressing up, smiling, uh, traveling abroad and earning a fortune. Well, it's true to some extent, just not enough. The older I get, the more I realized how hard it is to become one in reality. I am required to possess a wide range of skills, especially in communication. Uh, concerning this condition, I can proudly say that I'm up to standard. On the other hand, flying means that I need to be physically and mentally strong. Well, what I'm trying to say is that not only health is necessary, but also strength, endurance. Honestly, I trained a lot to meet those demanding criteria, but in the end, I fell short of one fundamental requirement. I was not tall enough, but it was a shame, to be honest, but my effort didn't burst into flame. Those skills are my great companion right now and probably in the future. A very sincere um, account of her dreams and aspirations. I think, you know, if, if I were to meet her in real person, I, I think I, I would like to be her friend because she seems very sincere. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep, and very clearly spoken as well. Very clearly spoken. So what did you like about that performance? Well, I think the, the first thing is that um, she was extremely clearly spoken. Uh, every single word I could under, uh, understand. Actually, there might have been one or two words uh, which were a little bit unclear. Mm -hmm. um, but generally, I could, I could understand everything that she said. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, in, in terms of the, the language, I mean, she, she goes into the topic and she gives a nice long response and she just keeps on talking. She develops the topic well. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. I love that performance. I, I think I would give it a quite good score, but I'm not an expert, <laughs> so I can't say. <laughs> but I, I really do enjoy, enjoy that performance. Mm -hmm. Guys, so remember, these are the three points that you should take away after today's show. Number one is that you are able to buy time, okay? If you can't think of anything, just continue to speak and tell the examiner that, you know, you need some time and, you know, you can't come up with anything, but these are some of the things that you can say. So first tip, you can buy time. Second tip is basically the five W's and lay out your points straight when you write the introductory paragraph. And what are the five W's? It's who, what, where, when, and why. Okay, so make sure you have that. And also to end the introductory paragraph with a thesis statement. So make sure you have all three of that and take away all three of that today. Thanks, Oliver, for being on the show. And guess what? Because the second time is the charm, I have a special present for you. Mm. Are you excited? Curious, yes. <laughs> it's, a, it's just a small little gift. But it's from Tita, my else team. And I hope that you can wear this the next time that you're here. Thank you very much. That's so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, don't ever forget that we are an interactive show. So take videos and post them onto our Facebook pages so that we can look for the next voice of the week. And if you have any questions, send it to us. And there's a special section on Facebook as well as on YouTube, we can have some writing excerpts and examples. And you can go there and take a look and also remember and download. So it's everything on our social media. Don't forget that. Guys, remember I shared with you at the beginning of the show? I have one last dream to share. And you know, as you guys have seen with Anne, with everybody on the show, sometimes dreams don't have to be grandiose. Dreams can be just as simple, and very, very personal as what I'm about to share with you. And for me, sometimes I just want to be all alone by myself and just to have that moment, that me moment that's just me. And that is actually one of my dreams. All right, guys, so I'll see you again next week. And remember to dream big and dream small as well. Take care. Ciao. Oh. Where did everybody go? I said I only want to dream to be alone sometimes, not all the time, and especially not now. But nobody's here, so I guess they made my dream come true. Oh well, see you guys and dream. Yes. No dream now this you're time. Not, now you're not alone. <laughs>
cờ a ca m e m e r a ra ca ra men ừ. thế nào mà hôm trước cái phương anh nó lại được ông thánh dạy tiếng anh mình ngồi đây lau máy nhẵn hết cả máy rồi nhưng mà chả thấy ông ấy đâu ừ. Ui. Ô, 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 ô. ta là thần anh ao đây ta là thánh anh ao đây có phải là thần đèn đâu mà ngồi trà máy suốt thế hả à? thì tôi phải đợi ông tôi phải trà máy tôi đợi ông tại sao lại đợi làm gì thì tôi muốn học tiếng anh tôi muốn nói tiếng anh giỏi như là phương anh ấy à phương anh nó đạt trình độ rồi nó mới học cuốn đó còn bây giờ vẫn cứ caramel với cả cameraman nó chưa học được cuốn đó đâu thế ông bảo bây giờ tôi phải học tiếng anh như thế nào bây giờ trình độ của người thì cũng khó đấy tốt nhất bây giờ đi tham gia các câu lạc bộ tiếng anh trước đi khi nào đạt đủ chuẩn rồi hãng động tới sách ôn ielts nghe chưa tôi cảm ơn ông thanh nhé không có gì ơ ơ ơ ơ tôi lau máy tiếp đây tao lại lo máy tiếp đi học rồi cứ các câu lạc bộ tiếng anh đi được rồi đi học để tao lau máy cho